Yeah, I mean, last time we spoke about Mike Chandler was the um, was his obviously his debut in in the UFC, and I think I painted the picture that I didn't trust his record outside of the UFC, and then obviously came in against Dan Hooker and just decimated him, didn't he? And was was, was super impressive. Um, there's a reason he's getting this amount of hype, you know, f- for sure. Mm. And I, I think we chatted about it yesterday. The, the narrative in this fight is sort of the the bully against the against the geek in some ways, isn't it? Like you can see Mike is all American wrestling jock, hi, dominated a high school, absolutely smashed it. Um, and then Oliver clearly doesn't have the same amount of power output but he's technically really, really nice and he's crisp and mm. he's well studied and you can see that he's like studied martial arts to get to the point that he's got to. Not not that Mike hasn't, but my perception of it is in a different way. Um, Ch- Charles is very, very crisp with his striking, but Mike just has this superpower with his straight left and his straight right, doesn't he? And it just comes right down the pipe, and there's not a lot of there's not a lot of people getting out of the way of yeah. it. There's no fat on it at all. Yeah, none, none at all. It's I, you know, it's a lot like Usman's straight straight mm, punches. You know, he, he no really tell. is able to yeah, nice yeah. and low in his stand, steps mm-hmm. through, finds the chin through their guard. Ooh. Oh, oh, it's gone. It's back. Go. It's gone back. Yeah, and yeah. then you got the classic sort of elite wrestler versus elite BJJ play, you know, and mm-hmm. and, and how that how that plays out. Um, yeah, Oliver. Or it just see, he seems when I watch him grapple, he just seems in a constant state of movement. Like he's very, very rarely stopped. He's all if he's not rolling for something one way, and you, you nullify that, he's immediately rolling back to a leg lock, or he's rolling arm to leg to leg to arm, or whatever. But there's always something in motion, mm-hmm. which I think for most people is very, very difficult to handle. Mm. With someone with with um, Mike's wrestling and the the non-negotiable in wrestling is obviously how to use your base and and establishing a base with that that is ingrained to the mike's wrestling it, it becomes a it, it levels that up a little bit do you know mm. what i mean like he has a he clear he has a clear understanding of what he would need to do to stop those attacks from from charles do you think his brain works fast enough to keep up with the attack from charles though because the, the, yeah. my, my thought is this if chandler if chandler spends there we go. If Chandler spends eight minutes in top position without getting subbed, mm. he'll be able to take Oliveira down and control him for as much of the rest of the fight as he wants. Mm. But it will take him probably seven or eight minutes of being under attack from top position with Oliveira working from bottom, elevating him with butterfly hooks mm. and working for ankle locks and knee bars and calf slices and trying to chase to his back. And like he's going to be, he's going to have to spend a round and a half up against that in order to get Oliveira to the state where he's tied enough to not be as much of a threat. Mm. That That's my perception when it comes to the grappling. When it comes to striking, it's kind of the opposite way around. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's like Chandler wants distance. He wants to, he doesn't want to be chopped down and beaten up consistently because his legs vulnerable and he's, he's he capitalizes on his speed movement in and out. So if he's fighting someone like Oliveira, who's got a more technical Diaz style approach where he walks people down from a high tire boxing stance, just peppers them with shots, kicks to the body, steps in with knees and elbows, has got a nice variety. If Oliveira is able to put Chandler up against the fence and do that to him, he's going to make Chandler really uncomfortable, mm. which would then That'd force be, him to yeah. grapple. And the, and the, the danger zone for Chandler, I, I think is less once he hits the floor and more the transition to the floor. Yeah. Because he's going through that guillotine and, and anaconda range where Charles is really good at just just stopping the takedown enough to jog his hips back. Yeah. You know, I was remember that little squeeze. shuffle he did against, I think it was Clay Guida. And Guida shot in, and he, he got in a position, he just went, jog, jog. <laughs> guillotine. Choke, jog, yeah. jog, choke. Jog, jog, choke. Yeah, yeah nice. Um, I mean, it's a fascinating match, isn't it? Really is. You know, it's one. Of the- it was far more fifty-fifty than I expected. Mm-hmm. When I first started researching it for War Room, I'm like, ah, I think, I think Oliveira, I think Chandler at some point is going to level change, and Oliveira is going to wrap him up. And oh, I think really? What, that was what my my yeah. perception was. But then I sat for a day and I went through Chandler's whole Bellator back catalogue. Yeah. I started at his very first fight and I watched all the way through, and he is just. 
He's he's Especially he's super powered in his straight right hand. Yeah. I mean, what he did to to Pitbull was just it was he decimated him with one punch. Mm. And now he now we've seen him do that to well to, obviously to to Dan Hooker with his left hand, but he also did it to Ben Henderson as well. Mm. So he's ambidextrous with his power and, and his precision. Yeah. Do you think um, I was watched the Felder fight with Oliveira, and it, I thought maybe that was a bit of a blueprint for Chandler. You know, he could. You have to be like insanely tough, yeah, and have some sort of granite head to be able to do it. But yeah. he seems pretty tough. Like I felt like that. That's a way I could see that see that playing out. Yeah, but then um, like so then if you think you're talking about the Felder fight, mm. yeah. See the thing is with, with Felder, Felder's got one of those styles as well, like Oliveira's. But he's like Oliver is more back foot, Felder's more front foot, mm. but their approach is the same. It's blunt force trauma over and over again. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah. Like Chandler is it Chandler's more like a Wonder Boy in his approach. It's it, it's right. not and you think and I'm thinking Wonder Boy in a long stance with his yeah. snapshots from, from range. Chandler Chandler likes that foot space outside the striking range. Because when he moves forward with that jog, like think back to that pit bull fight, right? It's in the mm. it's in the war room. Like as he throws his as he throws his lead hand, it's literally just a smoke screen. He jogs both of his feet just forward. Just touches him, wasn't he? And he just <clears throat> Yeah. It's like a piston. And like you think Charles Oliveira in his tie stance, in his tie boxing stance, just kind of walking him down, trying to pepper him. That centre channel f- could be Chandler's all day long. Mm. That that's my thought. I can I can just see Oliveira getting pinged right down the pipe, dropped yeah. onto his ass. But I feel like uh, Chandler's going to come at him and put pressure on him. Do you know what I mean? He's going to take the centre and he might do, yeah, yeah, he might do. But then I think he'll still maintain a punching range, yeah. Especially, especially if he's shooting into Oliveira up against the fence, he's he's delaying the the inevitable of a choke <laughs> when he's when he's in there. He'd be he'd be better to shoot out in the open and drive straight through, get mm. around the legs. Yeah. Yeah. And if he feels any arms around his neck, bail. Yeah. Bail Hit the quick. Eject button. Yeah. Hit the eject button. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's fascinating, man. I, I, I mean, I, I think, I think Chandler just got it. Yeah. Sounds like you think maybe Oliver is. I am got literally it. split right down the centre. Right. I, I can see ways for both of these guys to win, and because I can see so many ways. Because I can see so many ways. Like I can see Chandler trying for takedowns, Oliver scrambling and taking his back. Getting his eighth rear naked choke. Yeah. I can see Chandler getting backed up and slapped to hell because of Oliveira's pace and knees and kicks to the body. Chandler level changes and he goes straight into a guillotine or an anaconda. I can see both of those happening. Mm. But I can also see Chandler blasting him down the pipe with a straight right or a straight left and either knocking him out cold or hurting him enough to then jump on one of his submissions and that would be a rear naked choke. And you've got to think, like Chandler's only got one guillotine on his record. And it was from a, a position where he was up against the fence with his opponent on the floor. And he actually lifted them up in the guillotine to their feet to put more pressure on their neck. Other side. Um, Oliver has been guillotined twice mm-hmm. by Lamus and by Pettis. So then think about that. Think about Oliveira being a bit desperate for a takedown because he's getting blasted by Chandler or he's been hit and hurt, scrambles to to you know to for a takedown or or whatever and finds himself dealing with guillotines. Like, just be because it, it? it would, but just because he's he's a really high level grappler, yeah. it doesn't mean that when fatigue sets in yeah. that he's not going to be vulnerable. And and Chandler, I mean Chandler's hip pressure in the Eddie Alvarez fight was, was pretty amazing. And that's mm-hmm. the benefit of being a wrestler. As long as you're in top position, you're in your element. 